There are hundreds of elected officials to work on in this country at the federal, provincial, and municipal levels. You can, you can, you can go to them with a group of people and say, we want the fluoride out. Here's our evidence, what do you think? You can have a petition uh, in your local neighborhood where you say, look, we've looked into this. The 10, 15, 20 of us in this neighborhood have looked into this, and we just need your help convincing our city councilor to look at this DVD. You can have a copy of it too, so we're all judging the same thing. And then the people in your neighborhood can see it, and they can say, yeah, of course the city councilor should watch this, and of course the city councilor should vote against this. And you can have all sorts of incremental changes at the grassroots level. It's possible through the political process by electing uh, parliamentarians who are critical of the agreements to bring about change. Every time an election comes around and someone comes to your door handing out pamphlets, invite him inside and tell him what you know and ask him what he's going to do about it or she's going to do about it as an elected representative. They have to know that we know. They have to know that we're not going to stand for it. Start getting actively involved in local politics because real change is not going to happen with a senator or a congressman or a president. It's going to happen in your city hall. It's going to happen with your sheriff, your mayor. And your little towns and communities, you could have the best change there because it starts with the people. And we have to understand the more we use our hearts and minds, the more we spread this message, the more we talk to people, the more we communicate people, the better life we will have for us and our children in the future. I am very proud to have all of you guys here. You guys are my family. You guys are my friends. You guys are my companions in this info war. And we will be successful one way or another because there is no defeat in our hearts. Whether it's raining, whether it's cold or miserable, we are still out here because we love this country. We love this flag. And we love our freedom. Liberty and justice for all. Including sick and dying, not 11 first responders. Uh, movements around the world, social movements, citizen movements that are lining up behind this vision and I believe it's actually possible. What people need to remember is that we make up the base. They have no power without us, you see. And it all it takes is for enough people to step out of the system to cause a crash. You know, if the corner of the pyramid's missing, well, what happens? It all comes tumbling down. Start a website. Hand out flyers and DVDs. Um, contact your local representatives to ask tough questions to politicians. Just um, get get more and more involved in, in trying to spread the truth. Because that's that's really what this world needs. You guys want a DVD? Just want a DVD? You guys want a DVD? Documentary? Free DVD? What is it yeah. for? Now what's the basis of this? Uh, it's a uh, document. You've seen it? Yeah. Have you heard of it or? Um, yes, and I watched part of it online. Oh, cool. Awareness is key. Uh, nothing's ever going to change unless there's enough people who know there's a problem in the first place. So that's what this day is all about, spreading awareness. That's as simple as that. You as an individual can say, I'm going to make a, an 8.5 by 11 flyer for my neighborhood. That basically says, look, I make a combined family income of $120,000 a year. I live in a $275,000 house. I live in this neighborhood. I'm from here, and I'm just going to drop this off in your mailbox once a week. And I think if everybody did this, and you, you put on there what you're, who you are and what your intentions are, you can be semi-anonymous if you want, but you basically say, I live in this neighborhood, and I'm making this statement on behalf of people who are basically me in terms of demographic, irrespective of what roles are assigned for us by the media and by our society. I'm one of you, and I have this information to share. So you can certainly do that as well. Uh, there's, there's a million things that, that any individual can do, but I think more importantly, uh, it's going to have to go neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block, because the only reality that you can believe in consistently 
is one that you are in and one that you share with someone else. We don't need believers anymore. We need doers. And the doers right now are the average citizen standing up, organizing, and coming together under a common good to go save themselves. Because Canada is in peril. And uh, we're not alone. And this whole North American Union globalization is not inevitable like one or two people believe in Canada. It's not. It can be stopped. And if people who sit here since the time of Confederation and put our country together could fight and give up their lives to save this country, how dare we? As individual citizens in the 21st century, sit back idle and say it's inevitable. Our country is uh, going to this new world order and this new global elite. Save your country. And uh, we can do that. And Canada is no different from the same patriots and nationalists in the United States or other countries. We're fighting a war together. Whether we're individual citizens of different countries, we have to fight the same people together. We need to come together, get out there, educate, inform your fellow man. Do not be embarrassed. Do not be shy. Do cares if they call you conspiracy theorists? This is the truth. We're in a very tumultuous time, but I'm hopeful that on the other side, when the dust settles, a lot of these uh, institutions that were once um, looked up, uh, looked up to, uh, they won't be around anymore. And we're going to have to build this thing from the ground up. And um, maybe I'm naive, but um, I think it's going to afford us a rare opportunity. Uh, for m more uh, a freedom of expression and uh, more freedom of information. It may initially start out with, with small groups like this and in church basements, and, uh, but that's how the most important uh, movements have always started. So um, I, I look forward with um, a great deal of trepidation, but also a great deal of uh, enthusiasm and optimism. say today that this is not a prelude to a North American Union, similar to a European Union. Uh, are there plans to build some kind of superhighway connecting all three countries? A couple of my opposition leaders have speculated on massive water diversions and uh, uh, superhighways to the continent, maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. Manitoba is also taking a major role in the development of a mid-continent trade corridor connecting our northern port of Churchill with trade markets throughout the central U.S. and Mexico. Canada and Mexico are as one. Canada and Mexico have both fought against protectionism, and our two countries have launched an appeal for a reinforced system of global financial regulation. Mexico is doing its part in promoting closer and better integration among countries in North America. The world grows more globalized day by day and is divided into large, increasingly integrated economic regions. We need more integration, not isolation nor protectionism. And we have agreed with Canada on that point in the G20 and other forums. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet.